Hello, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about some useful array nodes. Now this is kind of like a sequel to a video I've done previously on just uh, what arrays are on a high level. Not a scientific look or anything, just very basic. But this one goes more into specifics of certain nodes, <clears throat> these six to be particular. And of course there's a lot more. Uh, these are the ones that maybe I use the most. Obviously, that's up for debate. There's others that I use a lot, but uh, yeah, let's have a look. So the first one is this guy here, Build Array. And um, for some reason, this node comes in with an error, so don't worry about that. It should go away once we plug something in that's um, supported. So basically, I've got a bunch of values here. I just plug in some values and I can print this. And we can see here, that's my array now. And we can see that the order is from top to bottom. So whatever's at the top is going to be the first element and so on. We can also append to an array. So there is an array, and if I want to add this value, I can just do it like this. Or if I change the order, the value gets added in the beginning. It's pretty straightforward. We can also just combine arrays. So I've got two arrays coming in here, and they're just combined into one single one. Now that might be what you want, or it might not be. So if you don't want that, if you actually want those to stay, those arrays to stay intact, but be put into another array, so a 2D array, what you can do is um, create a value node and just create a um, empty 2D array like that. And then if you plug that in first, I'm going to disconnect this. So now what we've done, we've actually put those two arrays into another array. Now I can print this because it's not supported, but if I hover over here, I can see at the bottom it's an array of an array float. And uh, we're just gonna have to believe me. So many times, let's say, especially if you're working with four each loops, you end up with a 2D array, but you don't really want a 2D array. You want it just to be all in one single array. So the way to do that would be to use flatten nested array. So this is basically just simply undoing what, what I'm doing here with this node, which makes no sense in this case because we're doing it and then undoing it, but just to demo it now, we're back to this situation that we would have had we just uh, not used this node. And that's build array and array uh, or flattened nested array. I want to mention that you want to be careful to only plug in the same data type here. In some cases, Bifrost is going to convert them for you, so it's not going to error, but in others, it's just simply not going to work. So let's move on. And here's sequence array, another very common one. It does what it says. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go through this quickly. Um, Let's say I want an array of 10 elements. I want to start at zero and step size of one. Now I'm simply just counting up uh, with each iteration. I'm adding one to the previous element, simple. And I can change that step size. Since we're uh, using floats, I can also uh, make a decimal, but I could change this to whatever supported quite a lot if you look here. I think typically I use usually float, integer, or long, and um, uh, vector three. So for instance, if you want to create a line as a strand, you can just make uh, use vectors for that. But yeah, you can also go into the negative and you can change where you start. 
So pretty straightforward. And this is useful in many cases. I'm going to leave this here and going to move on to the next one. Resize array. This one does what it says, but in a lot of cases is used in a way that's maybe not so obvious. But let's first look at its actual, uh, you know, what it suggests it does. So this is my array. If I plug this array in here and I'm going to uh, resize it, let's say I want it to be size 5, we can see it's shorter than the original one. Well, it's simply just going to truncate that or cut off those values in the end. But if I go over, this default value is basically just going to be inserted. So anything above the original size, this is the default value. But the thing is, you don't actually have to provide an array here. So watch what happens if I just cut this. Now I have an array of all threes. And that's what I've seen this most commonly used for. If you would just want to initialize an array to some value, meaning every element has the same, that same value, this is really quite a good way to do it. That's really all there is to this. Then there's this guy here. Now, this one is interesting because it doesn't really look like an array node, does it? There's not this icon for arrays, and it's not having array in the title. And essentially, it's just there to create a random value between the min and the max. The way this works is you have a min and max, and um, well, the output is going to be a value in between those, not including max. So max can actually never be uh, reached. Pretty straightforward, you have seed. Now, what threw me off in the beginning was, why does it have an index? I understand these three, but why an index? And the thing is <clears throat> that this node actually creates a sequence of random numbers, not just one number. And therefore, you can uh, choose which element you want of that random sequence by using the index. Uh, let's just quickly look at what happens here. So now we go in between 0 and 1. I should mention there's also another node called random array, which does give you random values between 0 and 1. So if you want random values between 0 and 1, it's probably uh, even better to use that one. But uh, I like the min max situation here because I can go pick whatever value I want and then use it that way. Um, so yeah, if I change the seed, I get a different random number. If I change the index, I get a different random number. But the array side of things here is that you don't have to stick with a single index. You can provide a bunch of indices as an array. And as a result, you'll get an array of random numbers. So let's do this. And for that, we can use our sequence array here. So. Let's just look at what we did. Now, the first thing I want to do, I want to change this to, uh, let's see what data type, long. Yeah, so I'm going to change this to long. Same here. So I think it's going to reset it to zero for some reason. But I'm just going to go and create a sequence from zero to nine. That's fine. And I'm going to use that as my input to the indices. And now, if I plug that in, we can see, and let's make this long too. It's a bit easier to see what's going on. So let's say 10, that means it should be between 0 and 9, never 10, OK. And now we can see if I change this, I'll get a completely different a random sequence. And if I change the start here, I'm basically, maybe just make it 20 or something, I'm basically sliding through this random sequence by uh, adjusting that number here. You should see the numbers travel up, if you will. So that's random value. I think it's quite useful in many cases. But again, 
there is random array if you want to look at that. Finally, we've got get from array, which is something I use all the time. It looks pretty unassuming. It's pretty straightforward. Let's look at an array again. So let's say I want the third element here. I should expect to get nine. Set this to index three. If I output it, that's what I'm going to get. So yeah, it just gives you whatever you uh, ask for with the index. But again, this one is allowing you to input an array of indices. So what if I want six uh, or uh, index two and index eight? So six and 24. Uh, well, I mean, there's many ways to create the array here. I could create it manually. There's another one just as a bonus uh, node string to array where you can just simply type in comma separated strings and then it gives you three options, keep it as a string, float, or int. And what do we say? I want two and eight. So I'll just say two comma eight. <clears throat> now that should give me six an array that has six and 24. And I don't want to do this. I want to print this. And there we go. So this is really useful. And if you want to see a practical example of this, you can check out the Mimic tutorial I did. Um, I think I'm using it with the instance ID. So uh, check that out if you're curious. And then there's sort of the um, opposite, if you will. Note for that is set in array. It works the same way. It's just that you also then have to provide a value or multiple values if you're using multiple indices, but that can be useful too. And yeah, I mean, if you go to core array, you can find a whole bunch of useful notes when working with arrays. I'm gonna stop here, but if you, for instance, uh, find all in array, find in array, First in array is like get from array, but it's just a shortcut. So you don't have to use get in array and set the index to zero. There's also last in array because in you can't just with get from array, you can't just use a minus one like you would in Python, for instance. There's get array indices, there's sum array, there's cumulative sum array, which um, I think I'm using in the strands video. So a whole lot array balance is useful. So yeah, check those out. But anyways, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.